hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about whether it's worth you buying a 2 bay NAS or a 4 bay NAS in 2021-2022. That's right, a lot of you are buying your first or even second NAS sometimes, can you think of upscaling or were you better off sticking with a 2 bay? And now network attached storage technology has now been around long enough that you know, there's been a lot of range, a lot of evolution of what these things can do and what they can't do, the storage media inside and more. And therefore, it used to be so simple to choose between a two and a four bay. It was just kind of, go for the bigger one, it's better. But it's just not the case anymore. And the way these things are produced together in a lot of two bay and four bay ranges, I'm talking about the likes of Synology, the DS720 and the 920, QNAP, the 253D and 453D, even Acer Store with the Lock Store 2 and 4. All of these ranges seem to come out spread across twos and fours and six and eight bay devices. And therefore, Choosing between the capacity levels just based on the base and ultimately the value of what the money you're putting out there is just not as straightforward anymore. In fact, this is a subject I've talked about in videos probably every couple of years because the, the battleground seems to change. And although sometimes, if I go back to a video I made back in 2015 on this subject, the very first one I did, terrible thumbnail by the way, um, when I saw that video I talked a lot about the virtues of the two bays because two bays at that point were incredibly cost effective but as the years have gone on the arguments at that point have largely become invalid so videos like this have to be made and that's why we're talking about this subject. So, that's a banging long intro, wasn't it? Let's talk about it. We're going to break this down into a few key areas. The very first one is probably, I think, the most important, although I don't think everyone does, storage. It used to be so black and white, easy going, left, right, up, down, that a two bay gave you less storage. Of course, a four bay is going to give you the larger overall storage if you fully populate these devices it makes perfect sense and if you do fully populate these two devices with the same hard drives be they smaller ones your twos your fours your six dbs or go bigger and go for like 14 16 and 18 tb drives of course the four bay is going to be larger but the real question for storage isn't just about maximum storage it's about how much you actually need and in some cases when it, you talk about your overall storage that you need there's a very good chance you can actually get away with a two bay depending on the amount of storage you need. So I'll give an example. Yes, of course, you can get larger storage capacity on a four bay NAS there. But if you go for either one of these two devices and you populate them with, say, four TB drives, yes, this device here is going to give you to a total after a RAID 5 uh, 12 terabytes of storage. And this with two fours in a RAID 1 is only going to give you four TB. But what if you only needed 4TB? It's one thing to have that tremendous scalability, but what if you don't need it at the start? What if, as is often the case with a lot of modern 2 and 4 bay NASs these days, they can be expanded? That's right, expansion devices more so from QNAP, Asus Store and stuff like that, less so from Synology, it has to be said. A lot of 2 bay devices now arrive with the ability to scale up their storage later. So you can get a 2 bay NAS uh, from QNAP, again the 253D, 251D, lots of them are out there. And all of them support their expansion devices that are either JBOD or hardware RAID. So that means that even though you buy a 2 bay device at the beginning, and yes, your storage scalability is a little more limited on day one because the two media base, they can still be scaled up later. And it saves you from having to buy a tremendous amount of storage early doors that you may not need. Now, when I talk about storage early doors, a lot of you might go, well, I might need that storage space later. Very true, very useful. But bear in mind, let's use a case and scenario, this four bay. Now, let's say you generate a terabyte of data. Let's, let's go nuts. Let's say you generate two terabytes of data a year and you get this device and you fully populate it with 4TB drives okay so you put 4TB drives in there some uh, WD reds maybe three year warranty you bring them in there so you got them in there you got your 4TB so you've got um, 12 terabytes to play with and you generate two terabytes per year first year two terabytes second year four terabytes third year six terabytes however do bear in mind that at that point your drives are out of warranty. They'll hopefully still work, but they're out of warranty. You still have your base storage as well, of course. You've got to factor that. But bear in mind 
that unless you know that, that you're going to utilize that space within a certain time frame, you may be then running a system where the drives are out of warranty. Now, yes, drives are supposed to last for a long time, but the brands do say that for sustained use, they live within a, a certain life cycle. So if you go for a device like this with those drives, bear in mind if you're using it for business purposes, you may be looking at swapping those drives out because they're out of warranty. Maybe you go for industrial drives. We'll talk about that later on in the video, but just it's worth remembering how much data you're actually going to need and how much space you intend to uh, yeah, accommodate later on and don't overlook that ability to expand the system later with an expansion like the DX517, like the TR004, like um, uh, Asus' own range of expansion devices. They've all got expansion options and often they can serve as a lovely little middle ground there between going big at early doors or starting off with a two bay. And it is worth mentioning, we'll talk about this more later on, that there is another option in the form of partial population to bear in mind. But that's gonna factor into our next area, the price area. Again, as much as I think storage is important, I think it is worth highlighting that a lot of you are gonna be factoring price more than anything. Because when you're looking at a two bay and a four bay, even though there's a little voice in your head, a little, hello, will you listen to me? Just saying to you in your head, you know the four bay's better, but can I get away with the two bay? That's how a lot of people are gonna think. A lot of the motivation behind that is going to be the price. So looking at capacity prices, this is how it would break down. If you wanted two terabytes in either one of these, you would put in two two TB drives with your RAID 1 redundancy there inside them. You'd use just two bays, partially populate it, and two inside there. It'd set you back about 140 pounds for two two TB drives. And once you go up, to the four terabyte level, and again, you still want to have redundancy, You, it would cost you 180 pounds to put two 4TB drives inside this. Now on this, this is where partial population and RAID start to kick in. Because if you wanted four terabytes of capacity on this, you could put three 2TB drives inside this in a RAID 5. So that would set you back about 210 pounds. So again, it's gonna cost you more in terms of storage and hardware, uh, hard drives, but about 30 pounds. Let's go to the next tier, 6TB. So again, two 6TB drives inside here, that's gonna set you back about 280 pounds. In the four bay here, we'd put four 2TB drives. Now our price tag is around 270, 280. Now our price is matching in the middle. Once we get to the 8TB line, in this system, two 8TB drives are gonna set you back about 460 pounds. They aren't cheap, and that's because a lot of the hard drive pricing at the moment is starting to scale up. On the, this drive, if you wanted to get 8TB out of it, you technically can't get 8TB. The closest you can get is 9TB, 1TB more, by fully populating it with 3TB drives in a RAID 5 or SHR environment. You do that and you pay 320 pounds for those drives and you've got an extra terabyte. So all of a sudden, the price is dipping and the more you carry on, you go to 10TB, you go to 12TB, 14, etc. you find that the big hard drives in single form, so in this you'd have to use two of every big capacity because of hardware shortages and because of cheer and because something else I'm gonna mention in a moment, it starts to cost more to get the bigger capacity on the two TB drives. And that saving, remember at the beginning we said around about 150? That price starts to dip away. If we look at 10 terabytes, two 10 terabyte drives in, in a two bay, so you've got one disk of redundancy, will set you back about 580 pounds. In this, it would cost you, again, 320 terabytes, uh, 320 pounds for that nine terabytes we just mentioned. It's only one terabyte less, and it saved you 160 pounds to do that. So again, now we've just covered that 150. We've dropped a terabyte, but we've now leveled the playing field cost-wise. Now, as mentioned, hardware shortages, cheer, stuff like that, all of these have had their part in why hard drive prices have got very, very expensive, particularly on the bigger ones. But one of the other big differences, if we open this up, is how things have changed with regards to enterprise and non-enterprise drives. For those that aren't aware, Seagate, WD, 
all of the brands have restructured the architecture of their portfolio. This is a little bit off topic, but hear me out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, TB, and even eight starting to get affected. All of those drives are available in non-pro and pro series drives. Pro series drives have got a faster RPM and more enterprise architecture because they're designed for data centers and heavy workloads. Got five year warranty, more cash, and they also cost more, about 30 to 50 quid more per drive. Now, because of that, those enterprise drives, when you're at the lower levels, and particularly if you're a home user looking at a two and a four bay, Pro Series drives are pretty much, now nah, we don't even think about them. Why would you buy a Pro Series drive for a small system? But the minute you go towards the bigger capacities, you don't actually have any choice because the brands have started eliminating, and there's a few exceptions to the rule, but they've started eliminating larger capacities in standard class drives because the architecture required for those larger capacities. So if you look at WD, you look at Seagate, you look at their portfolios, once you hit 12, 14 TB, they stop being available in non-pro and they're only available in pro with that increased price tag. So the result is, if you try to have larger capacity hard drives in a two bay, not only are you going to have to buy those bigger hard drives in pairs because of the RAID, but on top of that, the bigger hard drives have now got a premium price tag on them by default. That is why the scaling of the pricing seemed so good at the beginning at the lower capacities, but isn't maintained and weirdly skews the minute you go above 8TB. And therefore, when it comes to the price of two bays versus four bays, if you're looking at capacities sub 8TB, and again, factoring in a RAID, two bays are actually still quite economical. But now, at eight terabytes and above, bigger four bays and even larger NAS solutions are becoming more uh, just better value overall because of the storage media you're putting in, ultimately saving you the money that um, you thought you were losing by buying a four bay over a two bay in the lower capacities. So again, in terms of price, things have really changed in the last few years between buying a two bay and a four bay. But just remember the ATB limit. Next up, let's talk about power and performance because two bays and four bays, as mentioned, because they've all started being developed in the same series at the same time by a number of brands, you often find they've got the same CPU and typically the same memory, same network connections, same USB, same interfaces, all of that stuff. So consequently, the power and performance of two bays and four bays, you would be forgiven for thinking are pretty much largely the same. Unfortunately, that's not really the case. If we focus on performance for a second, yes, if they've got the same kind of storage media inside, whether you put a couple of four TBs in either of these devices, they should give you exactly the same performance. Indeed, if you went for two enterprise drives in this two bay and four standard class drives in here, they would get quite similar in performance with regardless of RAID 1 versus RAID 5. So in terms of performance, yes, you would be forgiven for thinking that these things have gone quite similarly together. However, it's how you enjoy that performance that's really, really important. Because if you are using a modern solution that has greater than gigabit ethernet, so you're looking at 2.5 GBE, 5 GBE, and even 10 GBE, and again, there are two bays out there with 10 GBE on board. I've seen them, not this one, but they do exist. Consequently, you can't saturate a thousand megabytes per second on a two bay SATA uh, drives a SATA hard drive, the fastest SATA hard drive I've ever seen, was, uh, it, or I say was, still yet to really be released. The Seagate Mac 2, giving around 400 megabytes per second. Even if you put them in a RAID 1 or even a RAID 0, they can't saturate 1,000 megabytes per second. They can't fill that tremendous bandwidth. But a 4-bay can, and a 4-bay can do it with a few 4 or 6 TB drives inside. Even if you put SSDs inside this system, an SSD that have a reported performance threshold of in excess of 500 megabytes per second, in a RAID 0 or a RAID 1, it doesn't just combine them. You just won't saturate that. So in terms of performance, yes, like for like drives or relatively similar enterprise drives versus pro, I'm uh, sorry, enterprise and pro series drives versus standard of the same capacities rated together, Internally, the performance would be very similar, but externally, a two bay, if you're using greater interface ports, will not saturate those external connections in the way that a four bay can. 
They can both take advantage of SSD caching in a number of cases, given that modern net network attached storage solutions arrive with SSD caching bays on the bottom and a lot of similarly priced and similarly ranged two bays and four bays, not so much these two, have got dedicated SSD ports on the base that allow you to not use up any um, storage bays. And again, the DS720 has that as well. But external performance wise, two bays just can't give that full degree of um, throughput externally that you're going to be looking for later down the line. And now I mentioned power. Yes, as I've mentioned in many of my reviews, overviews and news and stuff like that, whenever I talk about these devices, I make a very keen point to mention PSUs that these devices arrive with. And often, of course, four bays arrive with larger PSUs and theoretically can draw more power. But it's worth remembering that the PSUs on these devices, internal or external, will only use as much as they need to use. And the reported watts that I say on those PSUs are the maximums. That's the maximum draw. Just because the PSU is rated at 65 watts rather than 25 watts or 45 watts versus 90 watts or 120 versus 70 it doesn't matter it will only use as much as what's in there in this if you look at a lot of these NAS systems unless you are proper gunning it 24 7 the power utilization is near enough identical and when it you have to look at it on the grand a week month day or days weeks month years to see any meaningful difference and even then it's not that meaningful but when these devices are on for an extended period of time, forgetting power and performance, let's talk noise. Because a lot of people, when they're choosing between a two bay and a four bay, will be put off by the idea that a four bay is noisier. And theoretically, generally, that is true. Four bays like this one have got two rear mounted fans there. And I'm sorry, four bays have got two uh, fans, and there's only one fan here on the two bays. So yes, there's an argument that noise generated by fans are while uh, in ambient noise levels uh, will be higher on a four bay. But what I would highlight is when these systems are on, unless you're in a particularly hot environment, the real noise that these things generate aren't the fans, it's the drives. The hard drives you use, the bigger they are, and therefore the more industrial they are, they generate more clicks, hums, whirs, and just general ambient vibration when they're in operation. Now, yes, if you took exactly the same drives like this, the 14 TB Skyhawk, and you put two in here, and you put four in there, and you ran them, yes, the four bay would make more noise. But remember, the four bay opens the door to you being able to use less aggressive hard drives in terms of their architecture because the capacity storage that you need can be scaled across multiple drives in a RAID 5 or SHR or RAID 6 in a way that a two bay can only really chuck out a RAID 0 or a RAID 1. And often your hands are tied in that you have to get the bigger hard drives that we've talked about so far. So although, yes, in a like-for-like um, drive for drive fully populated environment the four bay is going to be noisier bear in mind that capacity targets when you look at the amount of capacity you need and how it's going to inflict um, be imposed on these devices in almost all cases because of the last the way hard drives have been reshaped and redesigned in the last few years two bays can actually end up noisier because they'll end up having to use the bigger 8, 10, 12, 14 TB drives rather than uh, larger numbers of smaller drives. It doesn't matter if you're running 4.4s four um, on here versus um, two 12 TB drives for both of them to give you 12 TB. I can tell you right now that these 4.4 four, four um, TB drives will not make as much noise as two 12 TB drives in a two bay. It simply won't. If you don't believe me, look at my noise test videos that we did uh, at the start of the year, where we just tested just a single drive to show the click tums and whirs, and it will give you some idea how much noise these um, hard drives can generate in larger groups. But this has been, should you buy a two bay or a four bay NAS? I hope this has helped. Again, there is no definitive answer because Every user is different. I'll say that in terms of overall storage, I still think the four bays are the best. It's not quite as clear, cut and dry as it was, but thanks to partial population, I think four bays give you the ability of scalability down the line for your storage, but expandability on two bays has to be noted. In terms of overall price, I'd say four bays 
have never been better value than ever because of the changing tides of hard drive architecture and prices. In terms of power and performance, four bays, again, for external saturation, but in every other regard, largely the same because of the way things are being developed these days. And finally, in terms of noise, two bays are getting noisier. It's no avoiding it. You look at spec sheets and you'll see what I mean. So let's face it, that is it. I hope I have helped you. If I have, let me know in the comments. Click like if you've enjoyed the video and subscribe to learn more. And do take advantage of that free advice section over on NAS Compares. It's linked in the description. It is genuinely a completely free advice service. Doesn't doesn't cost you anything. We don't keep your email. It's just you. Ask us what you need. We make some recommendations and then you choose wherever it is you want to buy it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.